What is going on, everybody? It's Zach from Switch Force. We just got done with our Indie World 2020 presentation, and we're here to talk all about it live, trying something a little different where I give you my take and then get to hear your take. And if you're watching it as a video on demand later, then you get to hear everyone's take. So today broke the weight. It broke the weight for a big direct. Now, this one is focused on indie games, but it still qualifies as a like normal direct, not a game specific direct, but something that we expect with regularity as Indie Worlds have happened multiple times in a year. General Directs used to happen multiple times in the year. Hopefully that's the case, and hopefully next week delivers on that Direct. But today's show, what did I think? It brought us a bunch of games, and like they've done in the past, they refuse to double dip. So titles like Hollow Knight Silk Song that were shown off before, not part of the presentation. Titles like Sports Story that were shown off before, not part of the presentation. Roki shown off before, not part of the presentation. Super Meat Boy Forever not or shown before, not part of this presentation. They have maintained that pattern that if an indie game is discussed in an indie world, they really don't like to double dip. Now, I respect them for that because it shows they're constantly seeking and acquiring and pursuing new games, but it's also a little bit difficult because you don't really get updates once you hear about a title. I was really sure Eastward would be here and we'd know what was going on with that game and we still have no freaking clue. We have no idea when Eastward's gonna release. Is it coming anytime soon? What's that game really gonna be like? And will it deliver kind of that Last of Us style mixed with Zelda 2D that we came to expect? Anyhow, let me know in the comments down below which game from today you were most excited about. I've got some notes here of the ones I really liked. Let me know in the comments which ones you liked. Hit that like button if you're ready for the next direct. I know we just had one, and this video is all about was it worth the wait, but I'm already anticipating the next one, because even though this wasn't my favorite indie world, I think it had a really strong crop of games, and they didn't fall into the same typical 2D side-scrolling pixel art metroidvania platformer type bubble that we've been stuck in for so long. If you look at this indie world, what to me makes it stand out is definitely not the big hitter game. There was no like Axiom Verge 2, there was no oh my god Hollow Knight 1, oh my goodness gracious they're bringing our favorite indie from a different platform. We already have so many of those and I guess the biggest indies are being saved for the direct. So this, the, the general direct, this, this indie world did not win because it had a, a major title. It won for me because it had so much good variety. If I look at the games I like, Things like Baldo, which they're showing right now, which by the way I called yesterday that it would be in the show. Things like Pixel Drunk Eden 2, which I don't think anyone called. That series, that game has, it, the initial one released in 2008. And Pixel Drunk did rear its head with Pixel Drunk Monsters 2 in 2018 on Switch. But that series as a whole, Dylan Cuthbert and the whole Q Games, they have not been around for ages in any sort of consistent fashion. So I love seeing that back. And then we've got freaking Dicey Dungeons, which is totally different. We've got uh, card games, we've got Animal Crossing type island games, we've got Sims, we've got board games, we've got a lot. And they still delivered on their stealth drops, one of which I think is really cool. Exit the Gungeon, a very neat game. It is a follow-up to Enter the Gungeon. It's Devolver trying to kind of do what Shovel Knight and Yacht Club Games do with Shovel Knight. You know, they've got Dig coming, and they've got Pocket Dungeon. So bringing Gungeon to a new type of game is really cool. Now, the downside is that this was out on Apple Arcade when Apple Arcade launched last fall, so it's an old game, but it's new to Switch, it's $9.99, and I can't wait to dive in, because I've been saving my my time with that game, expecting it to come to console. The other game that was dropped today, um, I think was called, like, Sky Racket, or something like that, Sky Racket, which I'm very confused about. That's a surprise drop, but I have no idea that, I don't know, it just looks like a shooter, like a side-scrolling shooter, not, not really my cup of tea. So, let's go through some of my favorites, um, and then we'll get to kind of an overall review of the show. I thought Baldo looked really good. It is merging like Nino Kuni plus Zelda action RPG, and, and the artwork looks amazing. And all of these games are coming in 2020, most of them spring and summer, which is great. Some just got a generic 2020 date, but I did appreciate that while we didn't get a lot of like actual circle on the calendar dates, we did get a lot of just like spring or summer, which is really good. And I'm seeing a lot of you saying that you didn't feel like it was worth it because they didn't bring the best games. And I firmly believe that a lot of those are going to be at the general, and we'll get to that in a little bit. But but let's give some shine to some of these games that were here today. I thought Baldur looked really good. Blue Fire, which is the first game shown off, and I'm going to jump back to that trailer now, um, just so you guys can see it. I think Blue Fire might be my favorite of the bunch. Um, Blue Fire looks to be this very interesting mix uh, of platforming, Chaos, ninja action, really cool artwork, 
And in a way, this game and The Last Campfire have like kind of similar art styles, which by the way, that's another one I'm about to talk about. So happy to see Hello Games bring in their new baby to Switch. But this looks fantastic. It's got like boss rush elements, really big, beautiful environments, a lot of movement traversal. It seems like if it runs well, if it's got a solid frame rate and nice controls, if it's crispy, because it's got to be based on how much you're doing here, this could be a nice hidden gem. And most of these games are getting released first on Switch. They're not true exclusives because they will probably come to other consoles and other platforms. But I do think that it's nice to see Nintendo saying, like, we've got it first. Remember I told you guys that with no E3, no GDC, probably no Gamescom, Nintendo is so important to the indie space, and they're doing their part by delivering tons of different titles, by locking them in, probably helping support them, giving them some, some cash, and getting them their promotion, uh, which will inevitably give them, you know, will help benefit them in sales and in cash. Um, so I hope that this one turns out really good. Blue Fire looks fantastic. Uh, I also really love Dicey Dungeons, and Dicey Dungeons got a small mention um, in the montage towards the end of the video, which, by the way, it was a, it was a short presentation. Um, it felt it felt very short to me. Here's Dicey Dungeons. I love this game. Uh, it is a... Well, I don't want to... Can we get, can we get a little more Dicey Dungeons here? I also like Wingspan. I'm a huge board game fan, so that made me happy to see. I was like, I just played Wingspan! Dicey Dungeons is fantastic. Uh, it is a game kind of like a card battler. Uh, but you're using dice and then picking different attacks that the dice are used for. It's like Yahtzee meets Slay the Spire meets Game Show, and it's phenomenal. I played the heck out of it when it launched on PC. I'm so glad we're getting on Switch. Nebulous 2020 date, but hopefully more later. Um, I'm really about this Eldest Souls game that was shown right before the montage. No. This one. Dark Souls. You know, you can't go wrong with these kinds of games. Uh, they make a lot of them. But it's very beautiful. It looks to have really cool combat. Boss Rush again. I feel like we haven't had a ton of these as of late. Like, my last favorite was Blasphemous, which is very different from this. Um, so I'm hoping this one can deliver. And you're using custom weapons and different talents. There looks to be nice upgrades. It's not just like, um, what's that game where you only have like one hit? Titan Souls? This looks to be a little bit more fleshed out in its Boss Rush style with a lot of upgrades I like. I love Super Liminal. I played that game on PC. It's fantastic. Um, I think it's a little bit under the radar. I don't know that many people even know about it. Um, Manifold Garden got a lot of love as sort of a, ooh, puzzler, but Superliminal is so much better. Superliminal is all about perspective, and things get huge and small depending on where you put them in the world, and it, it's just like, it is a mind melder, but it's so good, and I love the way they structure the levels. It feels very Portal-esque. You know games always say they're Portal-esque? I'm, I'm really, really glad that this one really is true to that and captures the spirit, the vibe, of Portal. I think it's fantastic. Um, I also want to give some shine to Pixel Drunk Eden 2. I'm shocked that this is here. I love the Pixel Drunk series. It's so creative. Uh, they do a fantastic job incorporating music, incorporating uh, visuals. It, they're, they're just, they are, they're good games. I love the Pixel Drunk games, but they're more just like these incredibly immersive experiences because of what they do from an audio-visual perspective. I think it's going to be great to have something like this on Switch. I remember when Just Shapes and Beats came out for, for Vita. That game was insanely amazing and made, for me, a big difference on Vita. Now, obviously, Switch has a much better library than Vita, so it doesn't need this, but it'll be good to have a game of that ilk on the platform. I think it fits in its own kind of niche, and I really respect that. It kind of fits in, you know, like, it's like that Luminous type thing where, I mean, it's not Luminous, but you know what I mean? It's, it's like a, it's an audio-visual tour de force. Uh, a couple others that I want to point out before we kind of open it up for, for questions and your comments and kind of give you my overall reveal. Um, the Last Campfire, we just saw a little bit of that. That is from uh, Sean Murray and Hello Games, No Man's Sky, which started off as a big disaster, but over the years, they have evolved No Man's Sky into a pretty darn awesome game, and they really showed the dedication and commitment where that game could have broken that studio, and instead they said, you know what, we're going to let this game make this studio, and they really put the time and effort in, and I think delivered on that game. Maybe it never reached its ultimate vision, but it came much closer than it ever had any right to, and this is their new game, which is a more intimate affair. It is a puzzle game with these little creatures that kind of look like they kind of remind me of minions were like cute and sweet instead of rude and obnoxious. Um, and you're navigating a very pretty world, solving what looks to be environmental puzzles. It has a lot of hob to me. If you if you play that game hob, it was a port done by um, Panic Button. I don't think this game is going to have much combat at all. It's going to be more explorative and probably more emotional. But hob looked and played really great on Switch, so I'm hoping that this does in, in some way borrow from it. Uh, while incorporating Hello Games' own touch. And what have they learned from, you know, No Man's Sky? This is, I'm sure, a different team because No Man's Sky continues to, to be updated. But 
Last Campfire looks really, really, really nice. Um, I'll also give a shout out to Feria, uh, which is this card game that I'm always down for a new card game. This one is like a card slash token slash grid based game. It's like an interesting mix. It's actually coming out this month, so that's cool. Um, it got pretty good reviews on PC. I'm eager to check that out. Um, Ghost of a Tale is not a perfect game, um, but it is a little mousey mouse world game that looks pretty darn fun. Um, where is it? Right here, after Blair Witch. Ghost of a Tale. You're a little mouse. Dude, who wants to be a rat? It's kind of like, what are those books called? Redwood? Red... I never got into them, but they're the, little bo they're the books with mice that were popular when I was in, like, elementary school, which might be a long time ago. Um, uh, last one I want to point out here. Where is it? Went through sublim Superliminal, Pixel Link, Eden 2, Blue Fire, Baldo, Ghost of a Tale, Dicey Dungeons. Oh, I want to talk about Sky for a second, because that game company, um... Whenever I see that game coming, I'm like, ooh, because remember, they did Flower, Journey, uh, Flow. But I want you to know that Sky, where is it? Sky actually released on iPhone and Android last year. So it is, I mean, it looks sweet, but it's a mobile game. Um, I don't know if they're making any enhancements or changes, but it is a social mobile game. So it does not get me going as much as it should. If, if it was a true, new, like brand spanking new, that game company title... I would be pretty darn pumped, but in, in fact, I'm just I'm just not very pumped. There's a couple other games that might appeal to you. I'm not the biggest like fan of like sim type games, um, but there is this one, Summer of Mara, that looks good. Also, this uh, I Am Dead game looks really freaking weird. Um, it's made by Annapurna or published by Annapurna. I they they pick great games, so I have confidence in that. Um, I don't know how I feel about Bark, these uh, floating puppies, but you know, hey, if that's your cup of tea, I mean, we do have uh, also Quantum League, which is this shooter where. You're creating your teammates for future rounds because it's echoes of what you did the previous round? I don't know. It sound, in, in theory, it's like, wow, that could work pretty well. But I know in execution, a lot of these games that have crazy quirky ideas, especially these shooters, end up not panning out. A lot of people also were pumped about Swery's new game, um, which is the one where everyone turns to dogs at night. This one. But again, it's kind of like a weird sim. And I know all of my... Uh, it's, a, it's a town RPG. All of my like time with towns or villages or... Any of this is going to be Animal Crossing exclusive for the next while, so I'm not as excited for the good life. Also, I think the art is really bad. That being said, let's talk about the, the Indie Direct as a whole. It's not the best Indie Direct. It's not the... It doesn't save what we've been waiting for. Like, if this is what we get and Nintendo decides to stay quiet for the next month, it still, is, it still stinks. We don't know anything beyond Animal Crossing, and we don't even have concrete dates for a lot of this. But here's what I firmly believe. I believe that this was a very good Indie Direct because it's variety and because it chose to differentiate itself from past indie directs by focusing so much on those 2D pixel art type games that I mentioned. And we do have some of them here, but look at the variety. I mean, the games I mentioned to you, Dicey Dungeons and, and, and Wingspan Dice and Board Games, Ghost of a Tale, a, a mouse-based 3D game, Blue Fire, looking really pretty in 3D space, a lot of movement, but also cool bosses. Obviously, you've got your Eldest Souls, which is kind of like your Dark Souls-alike pixel art. Uh, Exit the Gungeon is this interesting take on Enter the Gungeon, a follow-up that started off on Apple Arcade and now comes to Switch. You've got The Last Campfire, which is doing explorative action in a Puzzle solving in a very unique way, I'm sure, from Hello Games. Pixel Junk Eden 2 is a music platformer that's very different, a very eclectic style, and you build the levels as you go. Baldo, cool art style bringing in Nino Kuni and Legend of Zelda together in a really interesting way. I mean, there's a lot on display here, and so for me, it's a success, even though it's missing a lot of those big titles, and this is what I wanted to get to. No Hollow Knight Silk Song, right? No sports story. No Super Meat Boy Forever. None of those top tier titles. Where are they? Well, I firmly believe that at least, at least Hollow Knight Silk Song will show up at the Direct. And I think we also know that a Direct is nearby because of the fact that Hollow Knight Silk Song has been announced for over a year. No word on date, no word on even window. Last seen at E3, that thing has to be here soon. And I fully expected it to be a part of this Direct, and it wasn't. Why? Because Nintendo does not like to double dip. That's why we saw no Eastward, no Meat Boy, no Hollow Knight. But also because I think there's a general direct. And Hollow Knight 1 was a surprise drop during an E3 direct. So Nintendo values the franchise highly. And they will utilize their biggest indie games as part of their general direct to bolster their lineup. Which is supposed to be very port, uh, third party heavy this time around. I could see Nintendo wanting to rely on some of those cool, unique, new indies to help keep things fresh and really... Um, develop their year's lineup and and use maybe like Hollow Knight Silk Song is like wow it's a major game for April 
or it's a major game for May. I think Hollow Knight Silk Song is still very nearby. I don't know if we'll see Sports Story or Super Meat Boy in that direct. Those might be announcements that just reveal themselves over time on Twitter or wherever else, but... I think we could get an indie segment in the general direct, and I fully expect to see Hollow Knight next week. I fully expect to see a new direct next week. I think we are going to get one. You know, Venture Beats rumor, Jeff Grubb's rumor, and apparently well sourced is that there was an indie direct this week, and then a Nintendo direct. There was concerns that all of the chaos in the world would cause delays. We got the indie direct today, and I think we're going to get the general direct next week. So all in all, I would give this like a solid B minus, which sounds very low. Because everything should be an A, like that's how we feel, especially after all this weight. So maybe it wasn't worth the weight, but they did a nice job of bringing in a lot of variety and wetting your appetites, I think, for what's to come. So I come away positive. I think they're giving a lot of shine to a lot of different types of games. And there's a lot here that I will want to play. I mean, my list ended up being 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 games, which is pretty impressive. I don't know how many games they showed. I think like probably like 15, 16, 17. And I wanted, like, 10 of them. So I'm pretty pumped about that. Let's go to you guys. What are you thinking? What do you want? Start asking some questions or telling me about games that appeal to you or your overall thoughts about the Direct. And we'll talk about it together for a while here. Um, thank you so much for being a part of this. Hope you're all doing good. Hope you're all staying safe and, and not too scared out there. I will admit it has been wild and crazy. And my anxiety has been peaking. Uh, but luckily we've got a lot of cool games coming out. A lot going on. It's Animal Crossing week, so... Uh, it's hard to be too upset, and we do have things to look forward to that will keep us occupied. All right, so let's see. A lot of people wanting Silk Song. I understand. I think you're gonna. I think you're gonna get um, that very, very soon. Honestly, um, Justin says definitely not worth the wait. One or two titles look cool, but nothing blew me away or had me said, "Yeah, I'm getting that." I'll agree with the the first part of like nothing blew me away. I agree, nothing blew me away. I do think there's a lot of titles that, yeah, I am getting that. Like I mentioned, my list, for better or worse, this one really appealed to me. And for all the people complaining about too many Metroidvanias, too many 2D pixel platformers, Nintendo must have taken note and really delivered an eclectic variety of genres. Um, Burnt Toast says, sad about no Smash. Well, there was never going to be Smash here, but I do want to talk about a game. Thank you for bringing that up. I do want to talk about this game here. Um, it is called... Let me get to it real quick. It is the Indie... Smash Bros. And I think this is a brilliant idea, and I think the graphics look horrible. Bounty Battle. Okay, so this brings in, like, characters from Guacamelee, uh, SteamWorld Dig, it, the Bug Butcher. It brings in a lot of really cool uh, franchises and characters. Dead Cells, it's bringing them all together in a Smash Bros-style game. But goodness gracious, what do you guys think? This art style to me is horrible. Maybe it'll look better on the Switch, but I, I love the idea of the game. But this art style to me just looks so rough i hope it plays well i mean i'm down for a, a smash bros alike that has indie games i mean i really like brawl out as we waited for smash i really like titles like brawlhalla and rivals of aether but this looks really rough really really rough um michael says i really wanted a cuphead dlc update yeah i thought we were going to get that i thought that was going to be a part of it as well especially because there's an art book coming out today that kind of made sense um but TBD still, but Cuphead is something, Michael, that I think would also fall into a general direct given the popularity and sort of the weight of that IP and weight of that franchise. It's something that they could leverage in a general direct to fill a spot or fill a slot. Absolutely. Um, Sparta says, any news on Pikmin? No, I don't think you're getting any news on Pikmin until that Pikmin 3 port is revealed. Um, if, if that's even a thing. At this point, I expect Mario 3D World, but I don't know about, I don't know when we're going to see Pikmin. Um, all right. Frumpty says, I thought Blue Fire looked cool. If I end up getting it, I'm hoping that it has the emotion that Ori and the Will of the Wisps had. I don't think anything else looked that good, though. Yeah, Blue Fire, I don't know if that's going to be a story-based game um, or if that's going to just be pure action. It does look very cool. I don't know how much it'll have similar to Ori um, and the Will of the Wisps, but it is one of my top, if not my top game from the direct. It's an unknown quantity. Like, I know Dicey Dungeons, I love that. And I know I love Super Liminal, so I am excited for those. But of all the unknowns, like, this this looks incredibly promising. Oh, sorry, you mean the last campfire. Okay. Well, that makes much more sense about the emotionality of, like, Ori. Um, I also think that one looks good. I'm not as excited for it, because I think the movement here in um, Blue Fire looks awesome. And I've been playing Doom Eternal, so, like, fast, twitchy movement has been all up my alley as of late. Um... All right, let's see. 
Fuego Bros says, I wish I saw some sort of DLC for any of these indie games. Yeah, there, we're, we're waiting on updates for Katana Zero. We're waiting on updates for Cuphead. Uh, again, I think Nintendo has clearly established that with these indie worlds, they want to highlight a lot of games quickly and a lot of smaller titles and make sure that they bring shine to new companies. And I think it's probably this this way that they have set things up, the foundational way of like introducing the developers, letting them kind of talk about their game. It probably is really appealing to indies. They get to get their name, their face, and their game out there in a way into an audience that otherwise they'd have no chance to do. And with far fewer conventions happening, if any, the rest of the year, stuff like this is so mission critical to indies. And getting out there, getting their name, their game, their voice, their studio scene, it's huge. And this is an opportunity to do that. And I think Nintendo cares a lot about maintaining their indie dominance by giving the floor to the indies. And not just saying like, oh, Cuphead, Hollow Knight. We all know that. Those games are going to sell super well without this promotion. And they also might fit into the general direct. Um, let's see. Antic said, nothing really blew me away. Most of these games are wait and see, in my opinion. I can understand that. I can understand. I guess the good news is that a lot of them are coming out very soon, so you won't have to wait too long to, to pass judgment. Um, the one thing about Indie Worlds is there's no guarantee on quality. I think Nintendo, they obviously, you know, vet these games to some degree, but we've seen some Indies come out after Indie World or Nindies presentations that are not good. So there's no guarantee that all of these are good. They're just promising. And we'll have to wait and see. Um, Barb says the new Hello Games game looked okay, but nothing really wowed me about it. Yeah, it's hard to tell what is going on with The Last Campfire. Um, it looks very cool. Uh, but, I mean, that Mushroom Santa Claus man looks looking nice. I want to talk to him. But it, it's there's very little gameplay in this trailer. It's more evocative, so I'm not sure exactly how it's going to play out over a 7, 8, 9, 10 hour adventure. Burnt Toast says, Moving Out looks fun like Overcooked. Um, I've played Moving Out. I played it last year at PAX East. At that point in the game, it was okay. I don't think it's anywhere near as fun as Overcooked. But it's kind of cool. I, I like their... I respect what they're trying to do with bringing that kind of cooperative but competitive antics to a different style of multiplayer with moving instead of cooking. Something about it just... It's, it's more chaotic and less um, objective-based. And for me, like, I like the pushing myself and sort of that, like, score chasing that Overcooked has. And there is scores in Moving Out, but it, it seems more nebulous. It's not as like, okay, do these recipes. I think Overcooked nails it because it stays simple. It's very fun, but it stays simple. Um, Exit the Gungeon is amazing, says Jacob. Comes out today. I haven't spent much time with it. Do you like it a lot? I'm a huge Enter the Gungeon fan. I think that's, like, one of, if not my favorite roguelikes. Uh, so I'm very excited to dump time into this. I played it a little bit when Apple Arcade... Uh, was initially launched, but I wanted to save most of my game time for when it eventually came to consoles or hopefully Hello Switch, games. and it did. So that's very cool. Um, Evan, what am I most looking forward to? Uh, we went through a list a little bit earlier, but for me, I'm probably most looking forward to Blue Fire, the game that was first shown, because I know Dicey Dungeons, I love that. I know Super Liminal, I love that. I'm pretty sure I'm going to like Exit the Gungeon. Yeah, I think it's... Well, Pixel Junk Eden 2. I, I can't believe... I mean, I talked about a few weeks ago that I thought the Pixel Junk series would be perfect to kind of restart itself on Switch, and it looks like they might be doing that. We got Monsters 2 two years ago. That game was okay. Eden 2 looks really good, though. I'm very excited. Very excited. Um, Mega Man X, welcome. X, how's it going? You're very popular on Switch. What game am I most looking forward to in the actual Direct, the general Direct? Um, it's got to be Paper Mario. I mean... I'll take anything new, but it is my hope that the Paper Mario rumor of it returning to the franchise's storied past and going back to like more concrete RPG gameplay and leveling up, I think that sounds amazing. And then, you know, there was that slight rumor of Mario Kart 9 coming this year. If that's the case, I'm Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is my favorite Nintendo game, I think, of the decade. So if, uh, if they can bring a new Mario Kart, I'm all about that. Yeah, a lot of people excited for Baldo. Um, Baldo does look really cool. I hope they deliver. Baldo looks like the type of game that could come out and have really poor polish. And I don't mean to say that as any sort of slight on the, of the developer, um, but something about it just makes me concerned. Um, and I, I don't know. I hope that it doesn't control super clunky. The art is impressive, but sometimes art like that can kind of cover the fact that maybe it doesn't control all that great. So I hope it really does. Thanks so much, King of the Hills. I appreciate that. How are you doing? Um, 
solving its puzzles and getting to all the Seems like some developers are pushing release dates forward a bit due to quarantine. Do you think we'll get any surprise same day releases? I don't. I think a lot of these games have their plan, have their marketing, everything is set, and while it would be really nice, I fully expect things to launch as they're expected to. I know everyone would love it if Animal Crossing came a day early or if, well, we don't have anything beyond that. Um, but in terms of a surprise drop, there could be a surprise drop from the Direct. Just don't expect it to be something monumental. Like, maybe Meat Boy Forever does come out of the Direct. Or, I don't think this will happen, but, like, there's a, a chance, like, Hollow Knight Silk Song could be like, oh, it's ready today. But you're not going to get, like, a new Nintendo published game or something of that sort. I think you'll see delays backwards. I don't think you're going to see anything moved up. It's it just, it's not really plausible for, for most games. Vegan Game says, Pine was disappointing. Yeah, there are games highlighted at these indie directs that end up not being that great. Michael says, I really hope Hades does come to Switch. Your video got me kind of psyched. Yeah, I would love that. I got to check out the new update. I know they just dropped another 50-day update um, on PC. They are bringing it to console. I have to imagine it eventually comes to Switch. It's just not anytime soon. Um, let's see. Thanks, Mega Man. I appreciate that. Switch Stop says, give me Super Mario 3D World Deluxe. I'm really excited for that. I mean, it's it's like a Catch-22. I really want that game on Switch. Obviously, I'll play it again. And at the same time, it's like it's going to use up a slot. And should we really be championing Nintendo charging us $60 again for games that came out years ago? I would love it if they added something. You know they added something to Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze? They added stuff to Captain Toad. What could they add to Mario 3D World? That game goes on forever and ever. You get new characters, new worlds. They're fantastic. Those later uh, worlds are, are the best. So what could they possibly add? A new playable character would be fun, but I hope they add a new level pack that maybe takes some of the Mario Odyssey stages and demakes them, or it's not really a demake, perspective shifts them down to 3D World. That would be fantastic. Um... AJ says, Annapurna published games all starting to look the same. Really? I thought this one looked very different. I mean, I know a lot of times they do go with eclectic art styles. Um, but I thought I Am Dead looked really, really kind of interesting. I don't know what the gameplay is going to be like, but I think Annapurna does a nice job of um, mixing up. I thought this game actually looked kind of cool. I don't know. It's probably not my style humor-wise, but it looks kind of cool. Um, Thomas wants to know, how's Doom Eternal? I wish it was on Switch, because... I think the review scores are very low. I think they're very low. It's sitting at like a high 80s, and I honestly think that's very low. I didn't even love Doom 2016 that much. And I don't really have a ton of nostalgia for Doom as a franchise. But I think it is the best shooter of, I, I don't know how far back you have to go. I don't, nothing has come close in a while. It is phenomenal. And unless, like, the very end of the game that I haven't got to yet blows that up, or the multiplayer is horrible, to me it's like an easy 9 and maybe even more, and probably more. Um, let's see. Christian thinks the indie world was trash. I mean, I guess, you know, if you're only looking for tentpole big games, if you're only looking for the major stuff, if you're not willing to give a chance to some of these smaller developers, I can understand that, and I respect that. But I do think that they they showed good variety. And so even while, while I, I personally, Christian, like I came out of the show thinking, you know, that wasn't that good of a show because there wasn't anything to really latch on to. But then when we looked back and I was like making lists and taking some notes on what games I liked, there were so many, and I, I just appreciate the variety they brought. I thought they did a nice job. It might be um, As good as Bulls from, yeah, Doom Eternal is notably better. But the ocean Notably better. Um, let's see. Kyle says it felt like a massive screw you from Nintendo. Well, here's the deal. One, Nintendo doesn't pay attention to us as much as I think we'd like to think. I don't think they care as much about the Twitter commentary and the Reddit commentary as much as we would like to believe they do. Nintendo does what Nintendo does. They're a very successful company. They have the most successful console currently. They're crushing it. Their games review insanely well. They have the best exclusive library. They've got a theme park, and movies, and merchandise, and Lego, and Levi's. They're doing fine. So they run their plan, and we react. They probably don't think it's a long wait for a Direct, because they haven't had one planned, or haven't had one ready. I wouldn't view it as a screw you, I'd view it as you get a little bit of both. You get a little bit of, a, a little bit of indie stuff, and then you're also going to probably get your... Uh, your big direct very soon. I really think that's going to happen. I really think you're going to get that next week, and I really expect it to happen. I'm very excited for it. So give me 
what you guys want to see from the direct in the comments down below or let me know more about your favorite game for today uh, i hope you guys enjoyed this video just kind of quick discussion to hang out with you all and share what was going on with today's direct give you my take my review remember it's a b minus i think it's a pretty solid show because of the variety and the different genres and i fully expect that general direct next week so we'll keep our fingers crossed stay tuned for a lot more animal crossing stuff coming soon tonight i've got a really good video helping you guys get the game early so stay tuned for that in the meantime everybody thanks so much for watching hope you're in a fantastic day stay safe out there enjoy yourselves appreciate you guys watching and being here sorry if you didn't like the indie world i think there will be some really good games out of it uh thanks so much Felipe. hope you're doing well in brazil out there and until next time guys everybody thanks again switch force out Nintendo Switch でも発売されることを